Before we look at some limits of exponential functions, let's just remind ourselves what the graphs of some exponential functions look like. So f of x equals a to the x is the type of function that I'm talking about. And to look at some examples here, how about f of x equals 2 to the x? So the graph would look something like this. Notice that it passes through 1 on the y-axis and that it has a horizontal asymptote lying right along the x-axis. And this is the situation where that constant a in our function is greater than 1. The graph will generally look like this, where it's uh, sloping upward here. On the other hand, if I have f of x equaling a half to the x power, then I get a graph that is downward sloping. Again, it passes through 1 on the y-axis, and it still has a horizontal asymptote on the x-axis. And this is the situation where that constant a is between 0 and 1. So we saw the situation where the constant a was greater than 1. What can we say about the limit of such a function? So the limit as x approaches infinity of a to the x, in this case, is positive infinity. You can see that it just keeps growing and growing and growing. On the other hand, if x is approaching negative infinity, we see that it approaches 0. It's getting closer and closer to the x-axis here. And for the situation where a is between 0 and 1, we see that the limit as x approaches infinity of a to the x is 0. As x gets really, really big, the graph seems to be approaching the x-axis. Well, as x approaches negative infinity, we see that we have a limit equaling positive infinity. So it's kind of the opposite behavior. So we also have this function f of x equaling e to the x. So this looks like f of x equaling a to the x. It's uh, just we have an e instead of a. And recall that e is this number that is approximately equal to 2.71828. It actually keeps going on and on forever. Um, and the graph, since we see that e is larger than 1, we know that it should look something like this. It passes through 1 on the y-axis. It has the horizontal asymptote on the x-axis. And we can look at the limit as x approaches infinity. And from before, we saw that when a was greater than 1, this limit is positive infinity, which it is. And we see that the limit as x approaches negative infinity of e to the x is 0. So we can use this to solve for some limits. So let's look at an example. How about the limit as x approaches infinity of e to the 3x squared minus 4x plus 7 power. Okay, so in order to solve a limit like this, it helps to sort of look at what's going on in the exponent. In other words, we're going to ask, what's the limit? Instead of looking at the whole limit, we'll look at the limit as x approaches infinity of this thing that's in the exponent. So 3x squared minus 4x plus 7. And this thing we know is a parabola. It's a polynomial here. And it's an upward sloping parabola. So as x approaches infinity, we would expect that this should also approach infinity. So we have the limit now as x approaches infinity of e to this thing. So we have our original limit we were trying to solve here. Well, think about this. As this exponent here it's getting bigger and bigger and bigger. We know what the graph of e looks like roughly. It's this thing that's going like this. And so we would expect that this should also be approaching infinity. And in fact, it is. Let's look at another example. How about the limit as x approaches 2 from the left of e to the 1 over x minus 2 power? So again, I'm going to look at the thing that's inside of the, the e here, the exponent. And I'm going to look at the limit as x approaches 2 from the left of 1 over x minus 2. And so again, we can take a, a graphical approach here. We know that this is going to have an asymptote at 2. So I'll draw that in here. Here's an asymptote at 2. And what would this graph look like? Well, we know that it's going to do something where it kind of splits off. And the question is, how is it doing that? Well, if we look at x values less than 2, we see that we end up getting something negative. So we expect that maybe it's going to go like this. And when we look at x values greater than 2, we end up getting a number that's positive. So we expect that it's going to go like that. So as we approach 2 from the left, we see that we end up getting negative infinity. Now we can look at the original limit. So the original limit was the limit as x approaches 2 from the left of e to the 1 over x minus 2.
Well, this thing is going uh, to negative infinity. And remember the graph here of e to the x. And we know as we go to negative infinity, this should be approaching zero. And in fact, it is. That's the answer for that limit. Let's look at a couple more examples. How about the limit as x approaches infinity of 2 times e to the 8x minus 3 times e to the 3x plus e to the x plus 5 times e to the negative 2x minus 2 times e to the negative 6x. Okay, there's a lot going on here. If we were to look at these individual limits as x approaches infinity, we would see that this first thing here, well, that would be infinity. And the second thing, well, e to the positive 3x here, that would also be going off to infinity. e to the x, we know, goes off to infinity. Now we have e to the negative 2x. So the negative 2x is actually going to make the graph kind of go the other direction. So instead of having our graph look something like this, our graph instead is going to look something like this. And so we see now that uh, this one is going to be approaching 0, and this is going to be 0. Now, we could look at this and say, okay, well, infinity minus infinity, that kind of cancels out, and then we have infinity here, and then 0 minus 0, so this must be infinity. But remember, you can't treat infinity like a real number, so you, you can't do that. We have to try something else. Um, there's got to be another way to approach this. And there is. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the limit that we have, and I see that the problem is with these first three terms, the ones where we have e to the positive something here, 8x, 3x, x. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to factor out, in a sense, this uh, highest power of e here, e to the 8x, to maybe kind of help get rid of these infinities that we have here. So the way I'm going to approach this is imagine taking e to the 8x out and then dividing each term by e to the 8x. So in other words, I'm multiplying everything by e to the 8x over e to the 8x. So I'm going to do this for each and every term here. And you can see this is the same thing as, as what I was uh, imagining as factoring it out. This is what we would get. So each and every term is going to have e to the 8x in the denominator now. All right. And so you can see this is the same thing, right? We have e to the 8x in the denominator. To compensate for that, I have my e to the 8x out front. And now I can simplify things a little bit. So this is the limit as x approaches infinity of e to the 8x times. And this is going to be a 2 because these are going to cancel. And then remember your exponent rules. So this will be we do top minus bottom, 3x minus 8x. So if you do 3x minus 8x, you end up getting negative 5x. And this is good. We want to have negative exponents because we those, remember, turned into zeros when we did the limit. Okay, so now I have 1 minus 8. That's going to be e to the negative 7x. And then I have a 5 here. And then I have negative 2 minus 8. So that's going to be e to the negative 10x. And then I have 2 and then negative 6 minus 8, that's going to be a negative 14x. Okay, and then I can close the parentheses here. And now we see when we take the limit, this guy here out front, that is going to give us an infinity, but then we have a 2 and then a 0 and a 0 and a 0 and a 0. And so we have infinity times a positive number here. And infinity times a positive uh, real number here leads us to conclude that this limit equals positive infinity. Okay, how about if I did that same limit, but this time we're going to let x go to negative infinity. So now we kind of have the opposite problem. If I look at each of these individual terms here, I see that these guys actually go to zero in the beginning here, but then we have the problem with infinity again. As x approaches negative infinity of e to the negative 2x, remember this is this kind of graph right here, we see it goes off to infinity. So again, we get an infinity and an infinity. And if these were real numbers, we could say, oh, these would cancel out. But remember, you can't treat infinity like a real number, so we have to try something else. So I'm going to do something similar here. I'm going to take the original limit that I have, x approaching negative infinity, and I'm going to factor out, this time, e to the negative 6x. And when I do that, I'm going to have to compensate an e to the negative 6x in each denominator. So I'm going to go through term by term and write it all out, e to the 3x, 
over e to the negative 6x plus e to the x over e to the negative 6x plus 5 e to the negative 2x over e to the negative 6x. And then finally, uh, we have minus 2 e to the negative 6x over e to the negative 6x. And watch what happens now. So if I simplify this a little bit, I take the limit as x approaches negative infinity of e to the negative 6x. And this time, I end up getting everything as e to some positive number, which is good because we want to uh, get rid of these infinities that we have here. So we have a 2 and then we have uh, 8x. And remember how this works with exponent rules when you divide something here. This is really 8x minus negative 6x. Uh, and that's going to be 14x. And then we'll just go through term by term. We have a 3 here. And then we have e to the 3x minus negative 6x. That's going to be 9x plus uh, 1x minus negative 6x. That's going to be e to the 7x. And then I have a 5 here. Negative 2x minus negative 6x. That's going to be 4x. And then finally, we just have a 2, because these will just cancel. All right, so now what do we have? So e to the negative 6x, that's this kind of graph here. As we go to negative infinity, that's going to be an infinity. And then all of these ones here are all going to be zeros. So I have a zero and a zero and a zero and a zero, and then I'm left with negative two. And so I have infinity times a negative constant here. That leads me to believe this limit is negative infinity. Okay, one more thing you should know about limits of exponential functions. It's possible to define e as a limit e equals the limit as x approaches infinity of 1 plus 1 over x to the x power. And if we look at a graph of 1 plus 1 over x to the x power, you see that uh, we have an open circle here when x is 0, and then we have an asymptote, and this asymptote is at the value of e. Remember, e was about 2.7 something something. And as we go off to infinity, we see that we approach this horizontal asymptote. In fact, we could also go off to negative infinity because we see the other direction also approaches that horizontal asymptote. And finally, sometimes you might see this rewritten as the limit as x approaches 0 of 1 plus x to the 1 over x power. And in fact, this is how some textbooks define that constant e.